everybody. Simon here, Bangkok Chronicles, number... This episode is going to be about the replica watches. This is the one. This is for you, JP. You've been waiting for this one for a while. I've mentioned watches quite a bit on these Bangkok Chronicles, um, and I have a passion for watches. Horology, love watches, always love the top brands, but never really been able to afford them. So once I found, started finding replica watches in Bangkok, I started collecting them. And I probably built up about 50 in my collection since I've sold them. Um, just, they just sat in drawers or display cabinets, never used, it was, it was pointless keeping them all. But I've got rid of them all, I think maybe one or two left. I don't, replica watches are, they serve a purpose if you own an expensive Rolex and you don't want to wear it and you have a replica of the same model, you're not so worried about losing it, forgetting it somewhere. But replicas are not good for the industry. Um, the homages, as I've mentioned, watches that look similar, they pay homage to the, the real ones. They're legal and they're fine. But there is and was a lot of replica watches all around Asia. Most countries in the world you can buy them, but in Asia, back 15 years ago, there were they were everywhere. You could sit in a bar in Bangkok and a guy would come up with a like a folder, a pouch and open it up and he's got 50 watches there and he's trying to sell them to you while you're drinking a beer. Then the next guy's trying to sell you sunglasses and so forth. I had two friends back in the UK, very close friends that, to this day, and they were also crazy about watches. Both of those gentlemen are quite well off and they've got a lot of the original watches, but they love their watch collections. As I started finding um, in Chinatown, I kept finding replica watches on the streets around Com Tom mainly. I'd seen them on Sukhumvit Road, I'd seen them in Pak Pong Market, everywhere in Thailand you see them. But I never couldn't work out where they, uh, where the source was. Now, once um, I'd made lots of inquiries at Pak Pong Market and I knew somewhere in Com, Com Tom so that's next to Sam Peng in Chinatown. I knew there was some people there who were importing them. Eventually, once Mem and myself were together, we were buying those cheap dollar watches and we kept going down all the different lanes. And just by chance, it was just fate. While sitting at a cafe, if you can call it a cafe on the side of the street, having a cold drink, um, a woman and a gentleman, Chinese lady, Thai guy, sat at the table next to us, were talking about watches, and Mem was earwigging, and she says to me, they sell watches, and I, well, how did I, I, I think I just sort of said, hello and excuse me, do you speak English, and the lady, Chinese lady, perfect English, and we got chatting, that's how we met this particular lady. I won't mention names, but this lady was, well, she was one of the importers. She was importing from China, from Malaysia, um, or every country in Asia. You know, she was getting them from Singapore, from Hong Kong. They were just everywhere coming in. And she was buying in huge amounts and distributing to guys in the streets that I'd seen, the, the, the ones in Sukhumvit and Patpong, she was actually supplying them all with the watches, whether they worked for her or she gave them discount and they then went on to make money, I don't know. But she had a network of what I would call runners. The guys would, from all these guys in the streets, the guys would want a certain watch and the runner would go off and go and get a watch off her or off another seller, take it back to sell. So they were all connected, all these stalls, especially around Chinatown. We got chatting and she invited, and I said that I was looking for some watches. I didn't say amount or 
whether I was going to be you know, a huge amount. But we just we hit it off and Mam got chatting to her as well. And the guy was her husband. It was like a runner as well, I suppose. And they, she took us across the road into, um, a, it was, again, two shops. Just a little alleyway between. And you walk in uh, a few steps and it opened up. And this alleyway was like a corridor going through to storerooms. And this lady had a desk, a wardrobe behind her. Another lady with a similar setup opposite. A couple of the jewellers there who do strap adjustments. This was the lady, she had catalogues galore. And this is the lady that taught me all about the different replicas and the different grades. Now, I, I must have visited, oh, I visited her hundreds of times. We got really friendly. We still are to this day and we still chat. She would bring out on the counter and show me the different grades. And to give you a rough idea of these, there was a grade B. Let's talk about it. Let's pick a Rolex Submariner, so I'll put a photo up. A grade B, and it sold on the street for 800 baht, still to this day, 500 baht, 800 baht. Really tinny strap. It's, I mean, it's very hard for me to explain and try and show you the differences of the qualities. You have to actually handle them. Pictures won't do justice. This cheap Rolex, it had an automatic cheap movement. The strap, you could shake it and it was tinny. It was a plastic um, glass. It was cheap and nasty. 500 baht, 800 baht. Then she'd pull out another one, which was back then, 1,500 baht. It had a sapphire glass, non-scratch front. The bezel turned and clicked properly. The strap was slightly better steel. And it was a quartz or um, a mechanical movement. Different ETAs, it could have been a Seiko inside, it could have been anything, Swiss movements. But they were really good replicas that looked almost identical to the real thing. And she had hundreds of different colors and models for every type of watch. She had everything. The It wasn't till about uh, six months, so a year and a half living in Bangkok before she started introducing me to these A++ watches that had started coming in. Now these watches were, to me, selling for between five and 20,000 baht each watch. I mean, that's up to sort of 500 bucks. Why would you buy a replica watch for $500 when you could buy a homage watch back home for that sort of money? Well, these watches, I don't know why they made them because they weren't gonna sell many to customers on the streets and things. And there wasn't that many available, but the ones that were available were incredible. You could, they'd done every detail the movements inside were the same movements as the originals or they were reproduced and made and marked like the original. If you took one of these into a jeweler's, they would really, really struggle to tell the difference. But there obviously was a few little things you could spot. The serial numbers were always the same. The pins they used in the straps, um, just little things, but these high-end replicas were amazing and but they were a lot of money I though although we were making very good money I couldn't justify spending that sort of money for me just for toys um, but I bought the odd one for myself I didn't want to get into the market buying and selling replica goods counterfeit goods I just wanted to keep away from it there was too many problems you could end up losing everything and getting locked up however back then and I'm not sure the laws today exactly but buying a replica watch seems to be okay with the law selling no it's illegal supplying etc illegal but buying a watch 
if you go onto the web and you go to Google and type in replica watch websites, you will see hundreds. How they're getting away with it, I don't know. But you can see on their listings the different quality of watches and some of them will explain them to you, the different grades. I contacted my couple of friends back in the UK and I took a load of pictures and both of them, even though they, these were quite expensive, picked a couple of watches, sent me money and I purchased these watches off this lady and I posted them back to the UK. I didn't, I just charged them uh, cost, postage and a bit of money for my time for going and buying them. They were friends and I told them and they were happy with that. The, these guys were experts with watches and they bought over the six months, they must have bought 30 or 40 watches each, these top grade watches. They also had some of the lower grade watches uh, off me. Again, I wasn't making money on them, but it did enable me to, to make just a bit off them with my time so I could buy a couple of watches. And that's what I did. I just used that so I could get a few. The, both these guys were amazed at the quality and they loved them, but they had the originals as well. So a bit daft. So if you want, if you're really into your watches, the bright lens, the Amigas, which is stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, the, the, every brand is there in Thailand. You can probably nowadays with the likes of Alibaba and Alibaba Express and um, all the different Chinese companies online you could probably source these watches direct from China and places but if you're in Bangkok then I've marked it on the interactive map head to now ComTom has changed the last year or so they've cleared it all up and moved a lot of people but I can tell you this lady is still in ComTom um, in an alleyway good luck finding her you have to ask the watch sellers in the streets where the higher grade watches are. Explain to them you want the three, two, three hundred dollar watches. They'll know what you mean and they'll know where they are. Uh, they might even have some hidden, but they won't carry many of them because of the cost for them to buy and sell. Comtom, top of Sampeng, round all the little alleyways and ask. The more people you ask, eventually someone will say, yes, I know where, and point you. They're quite happy with all these people. If they haven't got the product, and they can't see a way of making money off you, they'll point you in the right direction. And you might even bump into this lady. If you want to see these watches at full retail price on the streets, then the only place I've ever seen them, and only a couple of them, was in Silom, Patpong Market, there was one seller I saw, a couple of these, but only a couple. You'd have to go and ask them. And that's the night market. Chattachak Market, just north of the city. I saw one um, Hublo, Hublo, whatever it's called, one of those high end ones up there. So maybe there. And Outside of Bangkok, never didn't see it anywhere. Phuket, Hua Hin, Patea, never seen them anywhere else. Only in Bangkok. So the watches, if you're really into the high-end ones, that's where you need to go. Websites, I've seen a couple of websites with these high-end ones. I mean, message me and I'll try and point you to those websites. But good luck on the search. If you're a watch collector and you want some of those, that's where you're going to need to go and do some searching. It's great fun wandering around those streets around Sampen. It's brilliant, it gets a bit hot, but it's so much fun finding the new little alleyways and things. Well worth a visit and a walk. The next Bangkok Chronicles, we're going to delve into phones, mobile phones. Um, which was a big part of my business 
also when I left Thailand so that'll be the next one hope you're enjoying these um, interactive map on my website landofsmilesthailand.com top menu along to YouTube point at YouTube and a menu will drop interactive map and you can go in and have a look and I'm adding bits and pictures to this map as we go along thanks for watching I'll see you on the next one bye bye